them save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, about 3,000 were added that day to their number. What we have happening then is here are all these people and they've come together and they realize I've killed God's son. What, 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 what can I do? Peter tells them what they can do. And so they do it and then they go, Whoosh, I'm glad that's over. Okay, Martha, let's go. Time to go home. No, they didn't do that at all. Look at what it is. Because God brings change. The Holy Spirit brings change. Jesus brings change. Amen? Amen. And you're going to see change that happens here. And look at the change that took place among these people, starting in verse 42. And they devoted themselves. They became devoted to one another. These strangers from all different parts of the world came together and they became devoted to people who they'd never known before. Why was that? Why was that? Scripture tells us in verse 42, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to work, work, uh, fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Jesus makes a difference. These people who had come and had their reasons for being there and had the things that were happening to them, they change. There's a change that takes place. We're going to look at that a little bit. But I want you to notice that... The, Jesus makes a difference. His power, His power changes us and makes us different people. His love is never failing. His love never fails. It never gives up. It's always there with me. And His grace, His grace, His grace reaches me. Though I killed the Son of God, His grace reaches me and it restores I want you to think for a moment about change. And I've asked some people to come and to talk with us about change. How being a Christian makes a difference. It makes a difference. Patty? Hello. My name is Patty. <laughs> Okay, I haven't been going to this church very long. In 2015, my husband died. He was 59 years old. When he died, I blamed God. I hated God. I cussed at him. I yelled at him. I didn't want nothing to do with him. I was completely lost. I sold my house. I came out here to be close to my mom. Um, when I came here, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to live. I didn't know. I've never been alone before. I was married to him for 25 years. In the process, I met this lady named Charlotte. And I watched her go to church, and I watched her go to Tuesdays. She'd go to church, and she was always going to church. So I started talking to other people about their church. And all their churches seemed really different. I didn't understand these churches now because they do a lot of singing and hooping and hollering and doing all kinds of weird stuff. Um, when I talked to Charlotte, I asked her about her church. And she told me about it, and I thought, oh, that's the same church I used to go to when I was little. But my biggest fear was if I walked in this door, God was going to strike me dead because <laughs> I told I hate him, you know. Charlotte convinced me to come and try it out. It took me a few months. She promised me God would not strike me dead when I went into church. <laughs> when I went to the first two doors, I looked at the doors, oh my God, he's gonna kill me. So I slowly put one foot in and looked, and I didn't die. I remember seeing these two ladies up front here. I couldn't remember who they were or what they were saying because I was looking at the big doors behind them, which was those doors. I thought, okay, I made it through this, but this is just a hi, how are you thing. The big doors is going to be hit. I'm going to be dead. When I walked in, I held my breath. I looked around. Oh, my God, I'm not dying yet. <laughs> when I finally sat down for the first three Sundays, all I did was cry. And all I did when you all were praying, I was praying. I'm so sorry, God. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I, I didn't mean to say I hated you. I really didn't. I just don't know what to do. But the more I did, the first time I went to this church and I cried when I left, I had such an overwhelming, I don't even know what it was, around me. I felt peace for the first time. I went home and I cried. Next Sunday I came with her again and I cried. 
of course, a lot of stuff. I had no idea what you guys were even talking about, so I always had to ask Charlotte, what was that all about? <laughs> you know, because I didn't know. So, this first time I realized that God touched me was she telling me, God touched you because you feel this calmness. Well, I decided to try this food pantry thing and help out with the homeless people. I've never done that before either. So I was in produce, and I'm working hard, sweating like a dog, trying to get all this stuff, and all of a sudden, tears came up in my eyes. I started crying. I jumped down. Charlotte hugged me. I don't know what's going on with me. She hugged me. Again, someone said, God touched you. And I thought, well, I wish he would at least tell me ahead of time, because I don't know what's going on. You know? So I decided to go ahead and be baptized again. Paul baptized me. All I remember was crying again all the whole time. And when he tucked me under the water, I kept thinking, God, are you going to kill me now? Am I going to drown? Is Paul saying something really bad about me? <laughs> you know? And I, t I was touched by God again. So now I, can, I have an overwhelming sense of peace. Every time I come to church, when I leave church, I am at peace. I know now someone told me that I didn't know how to talk to God. Someone said, well, just talk to him like you normally would. So I'd get up in the morning, hey, God, what's up? <laughs> you know, it's really nice out today. Thank you so much. And when I would get depressed or I'd think about my husband, I would talk to God and say, hey, how's Kevin doing up there, you know? Is he all right? And so it made me realize that I could talk to him. So now I'm going to church and I have a calming feeling I still don't know what I'm doing. I still don't know where I'm going, but I have the calm feeling which I never thought I would ever have again. And that's how God has touched me. Amen. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. <laughs> you said one minute just to say how God changed my life and then Patty comes in with that. <laughs> that was awesome. This was. <sighs> I found God. He didn't find me about 14 years ago. Because he's always been my father. I just didn't know it until then. Carol drug me to church. With Robert's help. And other elders here at the time. And I found him. I didn't know he was my father. So he came into my life and I learned, and I guess to specifically address how God has made a difference in my life is before I walked through these doors, before I was baptized by Gene Sneed, I had no direction. I, I was living for today. I didn't know anything about the big picture. I didn't know anything about where I was going when it was all over. When would it be all over? And finding, finding our Lord and Savior changed all of that for me. I knew where I wanted to go. I began to learn the ways of getting there. And in recent years, and, and the longer I've been here, the more understanding I've had about the devotion it requires to get there. I think I underestimated it at first. I think I thought, well, I've been baptized, that's it. I'm golden. Thank God, I thank God that I kept on showing up and studying and learning and being surrounded by brothers and sisters who taught me more and more and more and in many cases gave me an opportunity to do things encouraged me and uplifted my spirit and made me stronger as a Christian to help me find my way so what my relationship with God has how it's changed me is it's transformed me in every possible way imaginable. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank yeah. you.
The Holy Spirit, Jesus, God, is about change. Thank you, Patty. You've got us all crying now. Thank you, Dylan, for bringing in those things because look at what it says in verse 42. They devoted themselves. This is the change. Once they realized that their only hope lay in God's salvation that he offers through Jesus. Once they realized this, this is how the Holy Spirit changed them. They devoted themselves. Now devotion is something I have for my wife. That I said that I would be with you. That's devotion. Devotion is not hit or miss. It is devotion. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. I call this, they wanted to learn. Not just to learn facts about Jesus. Not just to learn about um, how much juice to put in the cup. Not just to learn the, 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 the protocol. But they wanted to learn about Jesus. They were willing to learn about themselves and how Jesus impacts them and changes them. Before they were opposed to God, now they are approved by God. So we too need to spend time in God's Word. That means... That when we are devoted to Him, we, we, we hunger after learning more. We don't say, oh, no, it's Sunday, I've got to go to church. But it's, I have an opportunity to learn more. If you weren't here for class, look at yourselves. Meditate upon, reflect upon yourself, and ask yourself, why don't I make it in time? Are you dedicated? Are you devoted to learning, Bible study, private study, and group study needs to take place. We need to show ourselves approved by God. Study to show yourself approved. So learning, just like Dylan said, we need to learn so that we can do more. The second thing that it says is, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. Oh, by the way, look at um, verse 46. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They were meeting together. They were learning together. They were com coming to know God more all the time, not just on Sunday. The second thing it says, they were devoted to fellowship. Fellowship. I call it love. They were devoted to fellowship, to love. The fellowship of verses 44 and 45 point to what this fellowship is like. It says, all the believers were together and had everything in common. Remember, they were from all over the Roman Empire. And they'd come together. And now they're coming together and they're sharing things, even selling their possessions and goods to give to anyone as he has need. They were doing that. Do you get this point? That the Christians sold stuff just to help the poor. Now, we can make excuses all day long about how, how that was something that just happened then, we don't see it happening again, or we can't do that now. And the more we talk about it, the more we realize, the more we recognize that if we're to be like that, it's going to cost us. There's a lot at stake. But a transformed life, a life that is filled with the Holy Spirit, gives to others sacrificially. It describes a community of faith that operates not because we are so wonderful, but because of the Holy Spirit that changes us and the power of God that is within us. He also goes on to say they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching to learn. They devoted themselves to fellowship and love, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Now this phrase, breaking of bread, is a phrase used by Luke quite often to refer to the, the communion or the Eucharist or the Lord's Supper. And so what he's talking about here is worship. I use the word laud. To laud means to, to worship, to praise, to, ex, to exalt God, put him on high. And notice that in verse 40, 26, excuse me, 46. Every day they continued to meet together in temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. They came together because they wanted to praise God. This was something special to them because they realized how far that they had been brought by God, that they were opposed to God, and now they're approved by God, that they have gone from being against God to being with God. I like the way Matt Skinner says it in his um, 
little article commentary on, on Acts 2, 42-47. He says, It is important to underscore that Acts 2, 42-47 describes a community of faith that operates in the power of God's Spirit. The virtues of justice, worship, and mutuality are not accomplishments of extraordinary folks. They are signs of the Spirit within a community of people who understand themselves as united in purpose and identity, not a dispersed collection of individual churchgoers. These weren't individual churchgoers. These were people who devoted themselves. They were united in purpose and in identity. Look at the change that took place. First of all, they wanted to learn. They spent time in studying and listening to what the apostles had to say. They didn't have the Bible, and so they had to come together and learn about it. They spent time in love. They loved one another so much so that they were willing to sell what they had to give for other people because of their love for one another. These strangers who they didn't know weeks before, and now all of a sudden they're in the same body and rejoicing together and sharing everything they have. And they came together to laud or to praise God in everything and in every way. Now we have opportunities to do that. I want you to look at your bulletin for just a moment. On the inside back cover, it says, this Wednesday, is family fun night. You don't even have to sell your house to go. It's free. The Brenners are opening up their house and you can come to their house and you can enjoy the refreshment of their pool and they're also going to have ice cream floats and floaties. Oh. You want to be there. Why not be there? Those people who are changed or filled with the Spirit want to be together and to share together. And the only way you can do that is by being together. And an hour on Sunday is not enough. So I want to encourage you, if you need directions, Jack has a direction. See him and he'll give those to you. It's on Facebook. Spend the time. Devote the time. Schedule the time to be there for that. You can even bring your kids and your spouses and your neighbors. Let's make it terrible for the Brennans because there's so many people there that they can't fit in. Okay. Next, oh, go to the back page, please. There's going to be another family fun night, a game show night at the church building. Again, you don't have to sell anything to be there, but look in the middle. This Thursday, this Thursday, Thursday, it says at 5.30 is the food pantry. Forget 5.30. People are here at 7.30 in the morning because they are devoted to helping other people. 7.30 in the morning, Kat will be here. In order that the, the orders come in, the food comes in, it has to be unloaded, it has to be reshuffled and packed, it's got to be organized. 7.30 in the morning till 5.30, they're working, trying to put it together, and they don't have enough help. They don't have enough help. It's summertime, and a lot of the people who usually help just aren't here. So the Spirit changes. Are we filled with God's Spirit? Are we willing to come and to help people who need help? You don't have to sell your house. You just have to give a few hours of time. You don't have to be here all day. But if you can be here for a little while, we want to encourage you to let the Spirit work with you. And then finally, it says back to school night. Uh, that back to school night is going to be a backpack giveaway. You want to help people in the community. You want to show God's love to other people. This is an opportunity for us to do that. We'll be accepting um, donations from people who want to donate things that we're going to put inside people's backpacks. Am I right? Okay, something like that. Okay. The church is also going to buy some of the essentials, but there'll be other things that you can donate and you can give and you can come and you can pack the stuff, the backpacks with, with the pencils and the paper and all the things that kids are going to be needing for school because despite the wealth of America, there are people here. There are people here who don't have the money to be able to pay for a backpack. There are people in our community who aren't sure where they're going to get their meals. And that's why we're going to have the food pantry. That's why we're giving away backpacks. Because we love one another. Because we are devoted to the apostles' teaching. To fellowship. 
to the breaking of bread and to prayer because Jesus makes a difference. Amen? The Holy Spirit makes a difference. Is that right? God makes a difference. Do I have a witness? What a difference Jesus can make. Jesus through Christ, the Lord of all, is waiting on you to walk in His light and to let Him make a difference in your life. When you feel discouraged or depressed, trust Jesus. Let Him guide you every step of the way. Walk in His light by being kind, gentle, and patient. What a wonderful, encouraging thing it is to walk in His light, to stand firm in your faith, to believe in His promises, and to see the difference Jesus makes in you. May we be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. May we be people who are different. May we show that difference as God fills us with His, with His Spirit. Lord, make me a servant. Make me like you. Make me a servant. May I be devoted to the apostles' teaching, to learning. May I be devoted to fellowship, to love. And may I be devoted to worship, breaking the bread, and to prayer, in lauding the name of Jesus. Lord, make me a servant. Make me